Hello everyone, Lauren here. So I wanted to redraw my old art and as I was perusing my very well organized drawing folders, this one caught my eyes because of the colors. One of my insecurities about my old art was my use of colors. But with this one, I actually really love the, the scheme that I used and I don't know what came over me the day that I drew this, but somehow I popped off with the colors and they're so vibrant and it exactly matches my current color style. So I thought it was the perfect thing to redraw for the end of the year. And since I'm ending the year off with the redraw, I also thought it would be great to talk about my art improvement over the years. And I have art folders dating back all the way to 2015, which I think is when I started doing digital art. And I actually didn't start out using a drawing tablet when I started digital art. I was just using, I think, the vector art tools in like GIMP or something. Because when I was 15, I was using GIMP to make posters for my K-pop fanfics. And it's kind of fun to talk about my old art. So one day I really want to make videos just dedicated to showing you all my art from each years. So from 2021, since I already did 22, to all the way to 2015, maybe older than that if I manage to find the art. And I would possibly be roasting myself and also praising my younger self. I think I probably do that a lot. But if I did that, I'm not sure if I should go from oldest to newest or from newest to oldest. I don't know. Tell me which one you would prefer in the comments. Anyway, this piece that I'm redrawing is specifically from 2018. At least the date on the file specifically says December 31st, 2018. So it's actually almost exactly five years ago, which is really wild to think about. And it also got me really nostalgic and also extremely proud of myself for being where I am now. 2018 was the year that I really started to explore finding a style that I could call my own because before that I was pretty much just copying other people's styles and just trying to see which one would fit me honestly. One day, don't know how I did it, I busted this out and I was able to just confidently call it my own style instead of it being a ripoff of someone else's. And that same year, I also finally started to do backgrounds. They weren't much, but it was still an improvement from being deathly afraid of doing backgrounds. Before that, I had only ever done like white backgrounds and even then um, when I did start doing backgrounds they were just simple colors and designs but hey you gotta start somewhere right and this style was also the beginning of the cheek highlight that I always do now I also shaded the hair much much differently back then it looked a lot shinier and honestly now that I think about it I guess I would call this style my shiny style since I really, really leaned into the highlights on the face and the hair. And I remember putting twinkles everywhere. I put them on the hair, I put them on the background, I put them on the eyeshadow makeup, put them everywhere. And I also drew the eyes less stylized, I believe. And it was leaning more into semi-realism. If that is the correct term for it, I'm not entirely sure. But it was such a change from what I was doing the year before. And I'm, I'm so glad that I did it because it really did bring me to where I am now with my art. Before 2018, I was stuck in a loop of constantly drawing chibis instead of portraits because that's what I believe people wanted out of me at the time. 
People also knew me from the emotes and chibis I made, which is how I predominantly made money. And no one was buying portrait comms from me because uh, I wasn't advertising them and I wasn't posting that style a lot. Nor was I even offering bus commissions like that because I felt that I wasn't good enough at them. And I felt that I wasn't good enough at them because I didn't have enough time to practice since I was drawing so many chibis and emotes and that other cutesy style. But that year, I don't know what caused it. It might have just been because I was a senior in high school and I, I told myself that I was sick of doing chibis. Essentially, one day I drew a portrait of myself and I, I really, really, really loved it. Just the style that it turned out to be. After that, I rode the momentum of it and I drew a couple more of my OCs in that style and some fan art of other people's OCs. And then I basically launched it into my new commission style. I kind of said that um, I was going to take a break from chibis and emotes and that I was just going to do this bus style and I'm going to try it out. And going against basically all my expectations, people actually embraced it. And I remember being so scared at the time that no one would like it because it wasn't a chibi or it wasn't like an anime type of cutesy style. And as an artist, it's scary to go against the grain and post something that people aren't expecting from you. And this style change with the bus comms was one of those moments that really taught me to just go for it and do what I want. And I was so, so overwhelmed with the support at the time. Like, I was so scared that no one was going to commission me with this style because they wanted chibis instead. But then I got at least like 10 portrait commissions that year, which was a lot back then for me since I was still in high school. And I can even still remember the periods of time that I was working on each of those commissions because I was literally in class, in my art class, just working on them since luckily my teacher was like chill and she just let me do my own thing instead of doing assignments. But basically, I loved what I was doing. I was finally improving on how I drew people. And I have nothing against chibis, but I just felt like I was stuck drawing them forever at one point like I would just never improve on drawing stylized people because I was drawing chibis and improving on drawing stylized people was ultimately my end goal so I just kind of felt really stuck and that experience of like overwhelming support from from people in something that I was really scared to do that experience taught me that I could have a freelance career from doing portraits too and not just emotes and chibis. So from there, I took that bus portrait style and I ran with it. And of course, it changed so much over the years. The style that you all know me by now is basically a result of this old one. It's an evolution of it. And honestly, I never stopped loving that old one though. When I posted the comparison of this redraw, on Twitter, Instagram, and even here on the YouTube community posts, a lot of people were actually expressing in the comments that the old one still looked really good. And they were praising the old style as well as the new one. And to be honest, I wasn't really expecting it, but I'm so glad that people felt that way because I feel the same. And someone was actually like saying, no offense, but I kind of like the old one better. And I replied to them saying, absolutely not taken because I also still love it. There's a reason why I chose this specific piece to redraw and it is because I still love it. It's, it's one of those pieces where you know how there's always those handful of artworks that you will never forget you drew and they will always, always have a special place in your heart. This piece is one of those for me. And I feel like it also helps that this was personal work and it wasn't a commission. Personal work was very rare for me in that year. And so this one is like 
one of those times where I actually decided to draw something for myself. So that's also kind of why it has a special place in my heart. Moving on to 2019, I pretty much continued on with this style. I'll show a little slideshow of art from 2019 here of the portraits that I drew, but yeah, I basically just kept doing more and more bust portraits. I didn't really do anything else. I drew maybe a couple of chibis and emotes here and there. And also a few face studies, but that was pretty much it. I guess I just got pretty comfortable drawing those portraits and I ended up staying in that comfort zone, which essentially resulted in me not really improving as much as I wanted to in 2019. It was a given that I improved in drawing portraits, but other than that, I really did neglect everything else which is, of course, bad for improvement. But let's be real, no one wants to give themselves homework. And I definitely wasn't going to give myself homework back then and like force myself to draw stuff that was outside of my comfort zone. And it's because I don't think I necessarily had improvement actively on my mind back then. Even though I'm reflecting on all of this right now, I still don't fault my old self for getting comfortable in that bubble of you know bust portraits there was this thing that would happen to me though where i would have a drastic change in art style whenever i moved programs i wonder if this happens to anyone else so my first actual drawing program that wasn't gimp was paint tool sci when I was using Psy, my art had this like buttery blended look to it. And it was because of how the brushes in Paint Tool Psy acted. There's almost like a, a really specific way that those brushes blended. It's hard to explain, but you might know what I mean if you've used the program, but I'm hoping that it's kind of noticeable in the slideshow that I probably showed. But after that, I moved to Procreate and man, Procreate has some great airbrushing tools, blending brushes, and there was also a smudge tool that I actually used. And so my art changed to a more airy and airbrushed feel. My lines were actually a lot softer than harsh. Everything just felt blended. And once again, it's a little hard to explain and like put an art style into words but hopefully it's noticeable in the examples that I show. I just kind of went ham with a smudge tool and like the airbrush brushes that were in Procreate. Some of these portraits though, these, uh, I actually called them colored sketches because I didn't, I didn't necessarily line over them. I was just coloring sketches and kind of cleaning them up as I colored. So the next year in 2020, I switched from using Procreate to using Clip Studio Paint. And in Clip Studio, it was specifically the transparency tool that really changed my, my process and workflow, which then in turn changed how my art looked. I went from the soft, airy feel of Procreate brushes to then embracing the, the textured brushes that were in Clip Studio. It really started and launched my love for crunchy textured brushes. My lines got a lot harsher and more visible. I started using hard lines instead of um, soft lines. The transitions were also harsher in my style because instead of smudging and blending, I was just kind of using the brushes themselves instead of a smudge tool. My lines got thicker and much more pronounced. And this year was also when I would sometimes just clean up my sketches with the eraser tool instead of doing line art, which I, I love that process. I love not having to worry about line art. And honestly, cleaning up sketches, it's, it's kind of a relaxing process and also 
most of the time people like their sketches more anyway and i was in that boat and so i was able to like really preserve the feel of the sketches instead of kind of ruining it with line art and also if you're looking at the slideshow here you'll notice that 2020 was when i made my ocs this was when sydney jules and Isabella were born 2020 was just a huge year of improvement for me in terms of style. My style evolved. So while in 2018, I found the style that I could call my own, in 2020, I grew into myself as an artist. And so that year, I wanted almost a fresh start with my OCs. At the time, I already had existing ones that I made when I was like 15 turning 20 i felt that i was ready to make ones that were my age you know 20 is definitely a milestone in life right so i created this group of characters who were all like this group of friends and they were supposed to be in college with me and you know it kind of felt like we were all going through the motions together honestly making these characters really helped me mentally i just Put so much of myself into them and i'm sure a lot of people watching have this experience with their ocs too also in 2020 i got more comfortable exploring colors this is when my colors got more saturated and and i realized which ones i really love to work with when i made sydney that is kind of what launched my love for kid core also and it just the launch this aesthetic that I now have, I guess, with my art. In terms of work in 2020, I did do a lot of bus portraits in this new style. I also did some half bodies, and I guess being in college just kind of pushed me to challenge myself with what I was drawing. I got into the improvement mentality a bit more because of it and I forced myself to get comfortable drawing more than just shoulder up portraits. So I did half bodies since I wasn't feeling confident enough to do full bodies. And even though I say this, I did draw a few full bodies here and there but I, I felt that they were pretty stiff and my anatomy was also really off in certain areas like the legs and the pelvic region because I didn't know what the rules were in drawing those parts of the bodies. So I was in a place in 2020 where I was really happy with how I drew half bodies, but I was still feeling pretty insecure about how I drew full bodies. But I am still pretty proud of myself for actually drawing them and challenging myself. So I'm gonna skip a few years here and go to 2023. Going off of talking about full bodies, this year I finally touched up on actually learning anatomy. And by learning anatomy, I mean like actually learning it in a class setting with like homework and everything. I wasn't just trying to piece together information from like anatomy tips online, which is essentially what, what I was doing before. Even though I learned the anatomy, I hated the entire process of learning it because of the way the class was structured, but I am still glad that it happened because I learned so much. It allowed me to be so much more comfortable drawing full bodies. I went from being insecure of drawing full bodies to being pretty confident now. That confidence turned into me drawing my OCs a lot more, and I designed more characters than I was expecting this year. Just last week, actually, I casually drew two characters in full body without any real struggle. I was really surprised at myself afterwards, but also extremely proud. I was honestly thinking in that moment after looking at the, the results of my drawing, I was like, did I really just do that? You know, because normally I would have tried to do a full body and it would look really stiff at one point and then I would just want to give up. But now after getting in tune with gesture drawing and anatomy, I'm definitely getting more confident in drawing full bodies in various different poses. And it feels really nice to be able to say that. 
to be at a point where I feel like I, I've overcome a lot of my insecurities with art, even though I still have many more to overcome, but I'm sitting here feeling like I can actually get over those humps in my art journey. 18 year old me would have avoided drawing so many things. And nowadays I can just tell myself, just try drawing it, you know, just try drawing whatever you're avoiding and you'll probably find out that you can actually do it as long as you try. And speaking of trying, another art accomplishment I also had this year was finally being able to draw backgrounds in perspective. Because remember how I mentioned before that I was deathly afraid of backgrounds and I would only do white ones. And then after that, I would only do like solid color ones and maybe a few doodles here and there. But now I've actually drawn like rooms in perspective. I'm no longer allergic to backgrounds. I can do it now. I've drawn whole rooms in one point, two point, and also three point perspective. And I've even learned some of the rules of how to light a scene in perspective with cast shadows. It's like my, my brain just grew so much this year. If I was talking to eight year old me, telling her all of these things that I can confidently do now, she honestly wouldn't believe it. Like she would think that I was fully lying and I don't blame her. I mean, I, I even learned how to 3D model this year when I think the last time I actually tried was in 2020 when I tried to 3D model jewels and I fully gave up because like Blender was too confusing. And now when I say it all out loud, I really did improve a lot more than I was expecting. I've improved in more areas than one and I've grown my skill set in so many different ways. And that's just in one year. That's just this year. And I can't wait to find out what happens next year. All right, so let me actually talk about my experience redrawing this for a bit. Honestly, I kind of struggled. My brain was doing that thing where I was pressuring myself to make something amazing. I think it's because I was feeling like, what if this doesn't turn out as good as the old one? And what if, you know, people think that I downgraded my art, but luckily, I eventually let go of that mentality and I was able to get through this and even though halfway through rendering I had to scrap the eyes and restart because they started to look kind of weird to me. I think I just over rendered them. I had to just like copy and paste the eyes that I used for the sketch because I knew that I liked those and so I did that and I just painted over that. And eventually I ended up with a piece that I am pretty happy with. To be frank though, I actually kind of like the old one a bit better. There's a lot of things that I like about the new one, but overall, I'm still kind of biased towards the 2018 one. I think the facial anatomy is definitely better in the new one, but I, I just like how there's a vibe to the 2018 one that I just didn't quite get in the redraw. I do think I drew the nose, the eyes, and the lips better though, but uh, I think it's because I kind of miss my 2018 rendering style. It has a lot more depth to it. I shaded a lot more and a lot darker. And my current one is on the simpler side. It's a little bit more stylized, which is not bad, but just in comparison to the old one, I wish that I did add a little bit more depth to the new one too. I could have redrawn it in a more semi-realistic style that kind of matched the old one, but I just wanted to draw without thinking when I was sketching it and I didn't want to force it. And so it ended up being stylized. So a popular question that I get asked all the time is, how do I improve my art? 
And my go-to answer is always to experiment, experiment, experiment. Anytime I experiment with my art, I just always improved one way or another. It always caused this surge of improvement. I don't know how, I don't know the psychology behind it, but it just happened. It just happens like that for me. If I experimented with colors, it kind of helped me understand them better, which then allowed me to use colors better and improve with them. If I experimented with how I draw faces, it caused me to learn why something might look off and why another thing might look better. And so I was able to stylistically improve with that. And so just, just experiment with anything and everything. I feel like there's always this pressure on artists to stay consistent and have a consistent art style, yada, yada, yada. But I honestly don't believe in that. I feel like you don't have to stick to just one way of drawing. So I say experiment and do whatever you want. What this year has definitely taught me is that I shouldn't be insecure about my stylized approach to drawing faces because I know that I'm fully capable of drawing them hyper-realistically. Because sometimes I would get that type of imposter syndrome where I look at a piece that I've drawn and I really like it, but then I start to have like those thoughts where I wonder if people think that I don't know how to draw a proper face. I'm like, do people still value that skill set, you know? And it's kind of a thing that being in uh, art school has kind of caused also because semi-realism and realism is really, really valued in college. And it's kind of twisted my mind a little bit. Luckily, by the end of 2023 and now, I've realized that it doesn't matter. I know how to do it. And I shouldn't be insecure about my actual digital art style. I do know that I'm capable of doing things hyper-realistically. I just don't choose to do that all the time. And that's okay. I know the rules and I'm happily choosing to break them. And so with that, that is all that I have for this video. I know I titled this like reflecting on my art improvement, but I'm not even entirely sure that I actually did that. I just, I don't know. But I kind of, I really feel like I did reflect on something at least and I kind of feel really good about myself in this moment ending this recording and I encourage everyone to also do do a reflection like this you know look back on everything that you did this year all the art that you did pat yourself on the back because you did that so yeah that's all I have for this video this is my last one for 2023 since I'm getting ready to do my holiday vacation. I hope everyone has a nice and relaxing holiday and Merry Christmas if you celebrate it and see you all next year. Goodbye!